Hi, everyone. This is Katie Crisdale. I'm just here keeping the seat warm until Dominique McDonald gets here. So welcome, everyone. If you haven't been on this platform before, welcome. Uh, we've got quite a large number of people registered for today. Let me go ahead and put the um, registration link in the chat box in case you have any colleagues that have not registered to attend. They can still jump on this meeting. We'll be starting in about 10 minutes. Welcome. I see Mitchell from Vakova. I don't know if everyone knows that each other here, so maybe pop your name and your facility or your town, city in the chat box. That's nice, especially keeping in mind that we are recording this meeting, so it will be available to your guards, to your staff, to other managers that haven't had the opportunity to join us live today. Uh, Dominique is here, so Dominique, if you wanna jump on at any point, feel free to do so. I'm just going to keep the seat warm, so to speak, and Dominique will be leading the meeting when it starts. Hello, hello. Hi, can you hear me now? Hello. Yeah, I think we can hear you. I see Kim's here from Lacombe. I know, Kim, you're excited. You're going back to work soon, which is super exciting. Mitchell's here from Vakova. Kim's here from St. Albert. Manda's here from Westside Recreation. Welcome, welcome. Dana from Bonneville. So nice to see all these faces from all over the province. Isn't that the, the silver lining to a web meeting, right? How many times would we otherwise get everybody from all over? Kristen's here from Strathmore. DJ's here from Spray Lake Sawmills Family Sports Center. You guys in Cochrane, you always remind me, you guys have the, the longest name in the best way possible, right? The Jamin Built, <laughs> Jamin Built Spray Lake Sawmills Family Sports Center. So if there was a dollar per word, you guys would definitely win that. I see Marina's here from West Ed. I am well, thanks Marina. Hope your water when you get it back in is, it looks good again, no green water. Brett is here from City of Lethbridge. Lisa's here from Medicine Hat, welcome. Diane's here from Wainwright. So we're covering the whole province. If you're this just, amazing. let us know your facility. Dominique will be leading the meeting. I'm just kind of getting us going. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Katie. So thanks for being here today. I heard there's some awesome prizes. So I'm super excited. Who doesn't like a good prize on Monday? right? Yeah, this is amazing. Thank you, Katie, for allowing us to use your platform. This is phenomenal. How many registrants did you get? Uh, when the it, meeting? Was, it was 91 when I looked about two hours ago. I just wow. hopped off, yeah, I just hopped off our webinar that I was hosting this morning at about 1230. So I didn't have a chance to look. I'll look while you're presenting, but there was no definitely yeah, some good registration. And I popped the link in the chat box. For anybody who's coming in, you can scroll up in the chat box and see the link. You can push that to a colleague. If there's somebody you don't see in the chat box that you think should be here, send it out to your guards. I mean, we will be online for over an hour. So even if they want to pop in for 15, 20 minutes and catch the recording later, it's a great option to see kind of who's here, what facility. Let me scroll back. I see uh, Leah and Marcy are here from High River. Kim is excited for prizes. I mean, everybody's excited for prizes. Let's be honest. Um, Mike, I mean, and we got some gooders. I know. Our Mike vendors and, stepped up huge. Like this is phenomenal. <clears throat> Mike's here from Black Vault. Maxine is here from Medicine Hat. Welcome Cassandra from Sylvan Lake. Danelle from Claris Home. I see more names in the chat box that haven't said anything. So I'm going to put that back <laughs> to people. There's more than 47 facilities here, I'm sure. Jamie's here from Stan Seawick and Lethbridge. Welcome, Jamie. Danelle from Claris Home. Let us know. Don't be shy. It's nice for us to know where you're from, especially when D Dominique is leading the meeting. She can get a good sense of, okay, well, maybe next time we need to get more northern communities. Maybe we need more western pools. I don't know, right? We really need to... to uh, Hi, Stephanie. Yeah. And I know there's a few other people here, too, that are not from Alberta that are lurking, and that's okay. We're happy to have you. I know Lauren. I saw Lauren was here from Saskatchewan, so I'm going to poke Lauren a little bit. Tammy's here from Red Deer. Stephanie's here from the U of L. 
Corey from Tabor, Kiana from Sylvan Lake. I see Freya from the Glencoe. Good to see you, Freya. <laughs> Lauren, <laughs> hello, Lauren from Saskatchewan, Prince Albert, I think. Nikki from Strathcona County. Hello, Nikki. Haven't seen you in a couple months. Uh, Lana, Lana, excuse me, Lana is here from Drayton Valley. So true story, Lana and I did our WSIT class together with uh, Donna. When was that? That was like seven years ago, right? I think that was, Lana and I did that WSIT. And Lana, those of you that have worked with me, Lana was the one that got the bubblegum idea from. So full credit to Lana for doing lesson plans with bubblegum. That is all on Lana from Drayton Valley, so. Hi, Vicki from U of C. Andrea is here from Banff. Good to see you, Andrea. I think no things are tough in the mountains right now. I heard that unemployment is like 84%, which is crazy and so sad. Marcy, yes, I am recording the session right now. So as long as the tech gods don't conspire against us, there will be a recording later this week. Anybody can watch it. So yeah, pop in and out. Samantha's here from Lethbridge. Victoria's here from Grant McEwen. Welcome, welcome. Lots of people popping in. Let us know where you're from. Say hi. Say hi to each other. Yeah, it's a good opportunity to connect. This is amazing. I mean, normally we would be in a big room and we'd be able to like say hi and connect with you and see your faces. Um, so, pardon? Air high five. We could do like air an high air fives. Yeah. Air high five. Yeah. Not the yeah. same. Not the same. Um, but uh, no, this is still great. I love seeing your guys' highs and where you're from in the chat because it also helps to remember your face and where you're from and what your pool maybe looks like. Um, so yeah, this is an amazing platform. So again, just want to make sure that we appreciate Katie and Lakeview Aquatics for allowing us to have our meeting on their platform. Typically, we would be in a venue. So we would be in, um, you know, a facility, big giant room or theater. And so we would be thanking the venue or the host. And so I just want to make sure we thank Katie and Lakeview Aquatics for hosting us on this alternative virtual platform. So it's great that it's going to be recorded and that we can um, check it later. You can also call in if the link isn't working. I'll let Katie get back into hosting because she's the host with the most and can help anybody with some technical issues in the behind the scenes. Yeah, so with the tech issues, generally, if you're having any sound issues right now, it is because two of us are, like, my microphone is on, and so sometimes different presenters, like, my audio playing to, to Dom's mic can sometimes create a reverberation. That will stop when we go to individual presenters. If at any point you're having any audio issues, Google Chrome is always going to be your best option, or Mozilla, Safari, if you're on a Mac. Um, Internet Explorer, not so great. There is a call-in number, so if you want to walk around and just have us on your phone, all of the slides um, we can make available. If you don't want to, like, if you can't watch the live show now, or you can watch the recording later, that will be everything will be posted in the chat box. So go ahead and try the call-in, Diane, if you're still having any audio issues. I want to track back and say that we've got Andrea here as well from Grant McEwen. I know Andrea is involved in the um, one of the networks in Northern Alberta that does the customer service side. They have a meeting once or twice a year. So if you're ever having challenges with REC software or CSR policies, Andrea leads that group in Northern Alberta, which is a really great resource for your like your customer service side of the facility. Uh, Ahmed is here from Trico Center, Sherry's here from Lacombe, Kim is here from Strathcona County, Jason from YMCA Eau Claire in Calgary, Vicky from Didsbury, Natasha from Strathmore, Andrea from Drumheller, Lindsay from Fort Saskatchewan, Harbour Pool, Sarah from the YMCA of Calgary, Shauna from the YMCA of Northern Alberta, Nikki from Olds, Dawn from Tabor, Kayla from Repsol in Calgary, Michelle from Leduc, Anna, uh, Anna can't hear us. So let me put the phone numbers again in and I'll type in call in is your best option, Anna from, from the winter club, one second. Oops, using Google Chrome. 
I see Natasha from Strathmore, sorry, it's scrolling. The ribbon goes really fast as you'll learn if you've done one of these or hosted one. Uh, Monique is here from Red Deer, Kristen from Strathcona County. Kristen, I have to give a shout out to Kristen last year, gave me a huge box of expired AED pads and that still makes me super excited. I have like 40 packages of AED pads, which makes me super, super excited. So thank you, Kristen. Leslie Anderson is here. Welcome, Leslie. We've got lots of people. Monica Sikot is here from Strathcona, Morgan from Mount Royal, Becca from Strathcona County, Sarah Jackson from Lac La Biche, former Red Cross rep, Joshua Koch is here, Ashley from Red Deer, Justine from the University of Alberta, uh, Nick Wiggins, internet is cutting out for you, Nick Wiggins. So Dom, do you wanna maybe liaise with Nick Wiggins? Best options are gonna be private chat or just check in with him. I see Michelle from Spruce Grove, Kim from the Derrick Club. Um, yes, thank you, Kristen. Vivian from the city of Edmonton. Christy from Sylvan Lake. Nick, I'm not sure if you can hear us. If not, I would try a call-in option or a different browser. Josiah and Charlotte are here from Pinoca. Hello, hello. I was in Pinoca last year. They hosted one of the kayaking instructor courses, which was great. Tanya from Okotoks down the street from me. Morgan from Fox Creek, Mandy from Canmore. So welcome. If you're still joining us, pop in your name and location and then we'll transfer over to Dom shortly, but we'll give people a few minutes to realize it's one o'clock. That's always me, like, oh my gosh, my meeting started three minutes ago. So lots of people still joining us. Cheryl's here from Vakova, Paulina from Strathcona. Nick, it's frozen just for you, I'm afraid. Alex from Strathcona County, Jen from the YMCA of Calgary, Stephanie C from Strathcona, Marion from the city of Calgary, Leah's here, <laughs> Leah's from High River, Jennifer in Edmonton, Nicole from Strathcona County, Ashley from Airdrie, Chelsea from Calgary, Jordan and Jordan from Automated Aquatics in Edmonton, Brandy Shudlowski from Fort McMurray, uh, Cindy from St. Albert, Chelsea from William Letsky YMCA. So definitely dumb. We're ticking up there. 124 so far, including our secret guest who is not so secret. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to type to Nick. He seems to be not frozen. Try logging out and come back in with the same link. Google Chrome. Not Denise is here from Clara's home. Leslie from Camrose. Brian, Brian Bauer is here from U of Age. Brian saw back at the uh, Drop Drowning event in early March. Those of you, we were at the Drop Drowning event the Life Saving Society had. That was pretty awesome. So welcome. I see Donna. Donna's typing. I gave a shout out earlier. Don was the master instructor trainer for my WSIT course with Lana from Drayton Valley seven or eight years ago, which is pretty awesome. Jared's here from Beaumont. So thanks everyone. Um, just to give you a quick navigation to the software while we're getting ready to get started. If you ever get logged out, you can use the same link to come back in. If you need to leave, this is recording. It will be up on YouTube later this week. Um, any resources that are shared by Dominique and other presenters, I will pop in the chat box. I will be going behind the scenes, working in the chat box, um, also connecting with any presenters via private chat before they go on deck. Um, any other tech issues, typically Google Chrome is your best option. Um, and you can also call in the link if you would like to share it with any colleagues is in the chat box. I will post it one more time. So people can join the meeting at any point. We do not lock the meeting room. They can join in 20 minutes. They can join in 40 minutes. Uh, there's no requirement that they have to stay to participate. So thanks everyone. Just seeing. Okay. Um, was able to log out. Janine, lots awesome. of other people. If you're not hearing anything, call in. Let me post those one more time, and then I'll try messaging with people. If you have individual issues, I can direct message you while Dom is presenting. Mm -hmm. This is great. Thank you, Katie. This is wonderful. So um, again, thanks everybody for coming. Um, thanks for those of you that are watching later, popping in and out. Um, Katie will help with the chat and manage the um, 
questions and such uh, from the side, and I will be hosting. Yay! So um, can we just also take a minute to thank uh, Lakeview Aquatics for hosting us on this platform? There's over 100, about 130 people of us on the call right now, and um, we wouldn't have been able to do that on any of our other platforms that we had. So this is a generous donation of effort and time and service, technical services and skills. So yeah, please fill up that chat with thank you, Katie, and thank you, Lakeview Aquatics. So let's get that thread just just humming. Okay, so um, today I'm going to run through some uh, agenda pieces right now. So we're going to start off with an update from the Alberta Association of Aquatic Professionals. And then we're going to go to uh, have Kevin Dronsick from Alberta Health Services. Um, he's going to run us through where we're at as of today. And then we're going to do some facility Sorry, can you still hear me? Okay. Um, so then we're going to run through some facility updates, some facilities from across the province, where were they at and what's going on. And then from there, if there's time, we'll do some Q&A. If not, uh, we have a platform that we can talk about later for those. And then lastly, it's door prize time. So we're going to have to say... Um, keep a little bit of time at the end of our meeting to make sure to give you all the different spiels associated with each of the door prizes because there's a few of them and each has a different requirement. So here we go. Let's get started. Need to move my face out of the way so I can click my slides. Here we go. Okay, so the AP, for those of you who've never been to one of our meetings, was established in 2014 and it's a registered not-for-profit association in the province of Alberta. So we envision a province where facilities and individuals come together to support each other and share information. So really our platform started with meeting back in 2014 and 13, we had meetings and then it went to a Facebook group. And so that's really the meat of where we've been able to do a lot of our information sharing so that it's timely and informative. And then our meetings. So we're having one to two meetings a year in person or now virtual. Um, where we can information share. And so that's really a um, key piece of the work that we're doing. So just to make sure everyone's on the up and up, AP collects no fees, provides no services or products for a fee, and relies on volunteerism and non-monetary community support. So um, I'm a volunteer and all of our board members are volunteer. We have committee members that are volunteers. And um, that's really the premise of the work that we're doing is all volunteer. Our mission is support, to support aquatic facilities, their managers and staff throughout the province of Alberta. So that's you. Our vision, we collect information from and provide support to our members, other related agencies, government and industry to influence standard industry practice and positive change within the province of Alberta's aquatic industry. The association envisions a province where facilities and individuals come together to support each other, share information and form an influential body. So our values are open-mindedness, honest and integrity, uh, professionalism and trust, collaboration, creativity and innovation, as well as research. And again, our funding is, uh, we strive to maintain a neutral and impartial, we do not seek funding through the province, and we're funded through support from organizations and municipalities that share our vision of the aquatic industry. We aim to support injury and drowning prevention, influence change related to aquatics, offer support to the aquatics industry using aquatic expertise and establishing common industry standards, prepare, end up, sorry, say that again, prepare independent advice to professionals, industry partners, and government, encourage and support consistency and practices across the province, support aquatic facilities, managers, operations, programmers, and staff, and provide a central hub for industry information. We promote professional ethics, and we recommend and influence industry regulations for Alberta that support industry stakeholders. That's a long list. 
So our past board members, who are all these mysterious volunteers? So we have um, had a number of changes over the years, people that have been involved right from the beginning and people that have come in or their portfolios have changed and they've had to step out or step aside and let someone else kind of take the reins. So these are some of our um, legacy holders, we like to call them. So Rob, John, Jack, Elise, Sunny, uh, Michael, Nick and Monique have all been key players in having um, a critical uh, piece to helping the AAP get to where we are today and keep going forward. We had an annual general meeting last week where we voted in new board members. So we have our current board consists of Lisa, Carly, Ashley, Samantha, Josh, myself, Ben, Brandy, Jenny, Christy, and Morgan. So please, if you can, uh, let's do a little clap. You can do a little thumbs up or a little woohoo in the chat for all of your current board of directors. These are all volunteers. All right, so some of our volunteer work, we have president, vice president, treasurer, um, and secretary roles, but we also have committees uh, that the members at large are uh, holding as chair. And then we're looking, if you're interested, uh, for people to help us with one of these four committees. So the communications committee, we have an industry relations committee, we have governance committee, and a resource development and management committee. So those those are kind of like working groups where the meat and the bones of what we're doing uh, is summarized. So the um, executive director positions, those we do kind of all the housekeeping and you know boring stuff. And this is where the action happens. So this is the fun stuff. So anyone is interested in joining our um, AP committee, please send an email. Um, you've already been communicating with Lisa Keeler at aap.ca. So continue to do that if you can. Fire off a little email and let her know that you're interested. We have a little Q&A and &A, an information piece. Um, and then, uh, like I said, we're looking to have some people help us with this important work. Now, one of the things that we've been working on over the past year is um, our website. So our website was launched, I would say in, I wanna say November of 2019, maybe before Ben, you can put it in the chat there. I don't, anyway, um, a while ago, it's new, it's new, it's new. Um, but we have been working on it for a while. So with that website, we've been able to upgrade into one of our new features, which we're launching today. So this is super exciting. This is an online forum. So basically we're taking the concept of the Facebook page and we're putting it into a more professional platform. So when you're on Facebook, for those of you that are on Facebook, um, the Facebook group, works really well to um, share information rapidly and quickly, but it only works for people that are on Facebook. So not everyone's on Facebook. And secondly, you join as yourself, not your organization, your workplace. And so for some people that doesn't necessarily work. So with the new online forum, which you can check out at the AAP website, um, with the new online forum, it has a framework set in to be more, uh, a better research tool for us, a better source for um, holding and storing information and links and resources and to have that discussion. So the great thing about the online forum is um, privacy. So you're going to have to get a login, a user login for access to the forum. Um, we encourage you to use your professional, you know, workplace email so that anything that you post is uh, tied to your organization. So if someone puts a question about what your facility does for um, unattended children, like how old can they be? And you want to say that as your organization, this is your policy, then 
it comes from you as the representative of that organization. So we can, it makes it easier for us to see as well where you're coming from um, when we're polling information. And so we can see that if there were 19 responses from one facility, uh, we can say that that counted as one facility versus when we see them on Facebook, we'll see 19 responses. And because it's your personal account, we won't be able to see that it's, that's all actually one facility. So that's pretty exciting. Um, the other thing is it makes it easily searchable. So what happens when you're on Facebook doesn't necessarily intuitive. If you're looking for, you know, the ever elusive discussion on breastfeeding in pools, um, which is a long, has a long legacy, many, 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 many threads of um, what our policies are. Uh, Everyone remember the policies are typically, yes, you can breastfeed anywhere you want. Um, so the idea here is with the forum, if we have a thread related to that, when you're going in later to find out about you know, changes or updates or language or whatnot, you can go look for that on the forum and find it and collect that information easier. Collecting information and sh being able to sh collect that data and share it with your management, your upper management, will be a lot easier and have a lot more professional look when it's coming from a forum like this, a professional online forum versus a Facebook group. So we hope that with the evolution of this tool that we're really going to be able to help you make your work better for you. So um, I'm seeing that you guys are liking the idea. That's great, because if we were in a room, I'm hoping I'd be getting some thumbs up from you. So what you need to do now is, not now, but at some point, is go onto the forum and sign up, and then start your threads. Put your discussions, your questions, put those in there. Um, as a board member, what we're gonna start to do is we're gonna try and figure out who's gonna be posting all the different resources that we currently have available. I've gone through and done a few little test posts with uh, the International Journal of First Aid Education. And I also linked one, which was the International Journal of uh, Aquatic Research and Education, I believe. So I've put two on there. So you can go in there and check the link and like it or add comments and then there'll be threads. Um, so that should make it easier. So anyway, I'm excited. Congratulations to our board and our tech group for getting this launched. We're thrilled. Thank you for your hours of setting this up. And I hope I hope it becomes a really useful tool. Um, if you have questions, you can pop those in the chat box. Um, then at some point, hopefully like when we get to the end, we'll be able to filter through those questions and then respond to them. Uh, okay, now the star of the show. Um, please let me welcome Kevin Dronsik, who's the Aquatic Program Specialist, Public Health Inspector Executive Officer for the Environmental Public Health and Alberta Health Services. Please let me welcome Kevin uh, Dronsik, who's on the line, I hope, I see. I am. There he is. And I'm going to mute myself so that we don't have interference. And you can take it away, Kevin. Thank you, Dominique. Um, so we're all good. I, you can, audio's working okay? Thumbs up. Thank you. All right. Um, so I think when, whenever I am have stakeholders or groups reach out to us to ask where we're at and what the status is, um, I always kind of feel a bit, I, I, I struggle and we're, we're learning a lot and, and we're, we're really, I think the one thing that we hear all too often, and I do apologize the pun, is, is that this is such a fluid situation and sit day by day, um, week by week, we're hearing different information, different jurisdictions, many of us are involved in, in um, um, organizing or, or being, um, having links with uh, American organizations or even um, other organizations in other countries. And so we're getting a lot of information overload. And I think many of the people on the line, including somebody like Katie, um, has really definitely had a, uh, a very um, 
challenging approach here. So, um, oh, I see we're getting a number. Um, so I, so should I just hold off a second here? Is, is there, I guess, Okay. All right. Thank you, Katie. All right. Um, Okie dokie. So um, I guess the general question that everybody is on everybody's mind is what now, right? So um, Katie has listed um, a resource that was found on the government of Alberta's website. So one thing I always like when I do talk to any stakeholder organizations, I just want to make sure that everybody kind of knows who's who in the zoo, especially now with so many different um, front-facing people in um, in kind of COVID that we kind of have a clear understanding of, of where everything's coming from. So um, the government of Alberta is um, kind of leading the direction for the COVID response. Yes, we do have municipalities that are working at a local level, but we also have the province kind of overseeing provincial aspects of it. And with that, we have um, probably one of the biggest um, spokespersons is, is Dr. Dina Hinshaw. And so Dr. Hinshaw is, um, her role is, is the Chief Medical Officer of Health. And so over in her, um, in her role, she is kind of the overseer of much of what we're hearing in terms of response. She's the one that's been issuing these, as they refer to, uh, CMOH orders um, from a direction of um, either putting in restrictions or where situations have had to uh, make assessments um, for different things. So um, definitely there's there's a lot of that question about who is she part of. Well, she is within the government of Alberta. So under one of the ministries, which is the, the Ministry of Health, um, they are kind of the overseers of, of everything that we're seeing right now. And so then back down to our level is, is that we're within Alberta Health Services, which is a, a, a arm um, an at arm length organization and my role as a public health inspector within that is that the government gives us those regulations like the pool reg and the pool standards to enforce those and, and also right now those MOH orders are ones that are directed for us for enforcement where necessary. So I just wanted to make sure that we get back to that understanding of who's who in the zoo. So um, most recently, Premier Kenny um, announced the relaunch of and a staged approach to the relaunch um, with um, coming back into from an economic and a public health emergency. So um, Katie has included a link um, in the top there, which is the relaunch document. And I really encourage a lot of people to refer to that because that is the most up-to-date information that even I have. Um, basically, we're, we're still kind of hearing and getting more information as things move forward, especially since stage one is, is supposed to relaunch um, as of the 14th. Um, so we should hopefully hear in the next, you know, I'm sure even today we might get a, a bit more information about what we could potentially see in those next little uh, bits. But I want to kind of allow people to kind of go through the chart that, that Katie, um, sorry, that Dominic has put forward. And I think this is a really good chart to kind of help frame and understand where we're at in terms of each stage of the process. So the first part was the stage was opening up the essential necessary um, roadblocks that, that we were seeing both in healthcare um, and some of the essential uh, health services necessary um, that were limited because of the original um, the original um, restrictions that were put in place. So um, we saw that with uh, physiotherapists, elective surgeries, that sort of thing. So we saw trying to get rid, trying to get through this backlog of elective surgeries and and that sort of thing. And then, but the biggest thing was is that many of the restrictions that we're um, have come to be part of our everyday life still are in place. So we have the 15, uh, maximum 15 uh, group or 15 person um, uh, mass gathering. We have um, isolation requirements if we are sick or ill. Um, and then also kind of that social distancing, physical distancing um, uh, approach to limit uh, potential spread of, of COVID-19. So then we start moving into stage one, and, and this is one of the biggest parts and, and the one thing that's taking the most priority at this time is, is that what are we doing right now? And so the 
first part of this was stage one. So we have in stage one, we have still maintaining distances of two meters, still prohibiting large gatherings of no more than 15 people, and then uh, encouraging wearing masks and, and using physical distancing where possible, um, staying as home as much as possible, um, looking at uh, ways of mitigating the risk to vulnerable populations and long-term care facilities, um, and then also kind of the, the isolation and quarantine requirements. So as we start to kind of go into each stage, we're seeing that those restrictions are starting to become less and less and less. And, and one of the biggest questions that we're getting from facilities are is, is that what are we going to see when we finally get to it? So um, if you haven't already looked at this document, you'll see that pools and rec centers and fitness facilities all fall under that stage three. And we see that within stage three, we have probably some of the least restricted requirements necessary for um, social distancing and, and mass gathering and that sort of thing. However, we just don't know when that date is going to happen. And so every stage is, is, is important to monitor and take time to, to get into that stage, work through some of the challenges that are being faced, get the information, find out where the challenges are, and then we can move on to stage two and then hopefully to stage three. But the time frame, we haven't even been provided any additional information. As a just as an example, um, I heard about the relaunch process and the and the dates and everything um, the same time that uh, that the premier had released his information. So you know, we, some people uh, believe that maybe I'm privy to more information than maybe. Uh, some people might, and and while there are few discussions, something like this that was that was so huge, um, I had colleagues that were in very high positions, and this was and it was the first that they heard about it was when the the press release and and all the information came out. So, so some of the questions right now, um, I don't have answers to, and 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 but what we want to do is is that I think for and foremost, is is that I've been working with my colleagues within the government of Alberta um, to try and kind of bring in at least stakeholders and bring in questions from groups like AAAP here, um, have some representatives at a table where we can kind of hear the concerns and some of the questions that, that members are bringing forward. So I do encourage whatever organization that, that you uh, place yourself with or that you um, work with, um, relay with them, um, provide them with feedback of concerns or, or questions that you might have. And what we want to do is we want to try and kind of compile that, bring that forward so that hopefully when we start to move and get closer to that stage three relaunch, we have an idea of what what kind of questions, what kind of concerns the aquatic industry is going to have, and we can try and anticipate what kind of process that could roll forward. So some of the challenges that we're going to be faced with, um, first and foremost, is going to be um, water sampling. So that's the first thing that kind of came to mind when people start asking me about what are we talking about with the relaunch. So we have many facilities that have been either drained or sitting um, circulating for a period of time. And, and I'm sure if we pull the, the audience here, there's probably a, a number of questions, and challenges and concerns that each each pool operator is having um, in maintaining that. Um, you know, you don't have people in the pool, you have older pools, you have challenges with infrastructure, you have challenges with, you know, maybe an operator having to maintain multiple facilities, especially large organizations like City of Calgary, YMCA's, City of Edmonton's, um, even even that we're starting to see operators that were working on uh, processes that um, that they're being pulled in different directions because they're the kind of the connection to the rec center. Maybe that rec center is being used as a assessment center or um, has been used for a vulnerable populations uh, to be a shelter, right? So they're they're you're pulling and not really even talking about aquatics yet. So while your pool may be circulating. Um, your pool may be empty and one of the challenges are is, is that while emptying the pool for a shutdown is you know kind of exactly kind of what kind of dates were some pools emptied in kind of a very quick fashion and, and maybe didn't consider some of the other aspects that could create challenges with a restart um, such as draining out filters um, ensuring the lines are as drained as possible to avoid bacterial growth and there's a great presentation that um, and and information that we've seen out there um, Katie I'll, I'll I'll uh, throw um, I'll, I'll throw a um, uh, uh, or throw the link up to the uh, presentation that uh, Brent from Automated Aquatics did. Now you know I'm not we're we're not saying that this is the be all end all, but I think it's a good just kind of general discussion about some of the challenges that facilities will be faced with 
Um, and so there's a lot of really good information. CDC just recently put out some information regarding what to look for on a startup um, as well. It's not earth shatteringly new information and stuff that we didn't know of anymore, um, but it is um, really good information to for facilities to consider. So with that being said, we know that there's going to be some challenges with water sampling. Um, currently, uh, some of you may or may not know, but the same lab that we drop off our water samples is the same lab that's doing the COVID-19 testing. Um, so that's the provincial laboratory or, or um, has been renamed um, to Precision Laboratories, um, but it is operated by the province of Alberta. And so Precision Laboratories or Prov Lab, um, still kind of, we still refer to as a Prov Lab, is that that's where we drop off or that's where the water samples are processed. So some people that work in um, rural communities, you drop it off at a health center and then that water sample is either sent to Calgary uh, Provincial Laboratory or Edmonton Provincial Laboratory for plating um, where then the results are, are provided to the local health authority and then you get a call or a notification from your health inspector if a water sample is, um, uh, comes back unsatisfactory. So um, overall, um, the biggest challenge right now is, is that only essential water samples are being processed. And that's just due to they don't want to overwhelm the system. Um, they want to make sure that they have capacity in stages to move forward. So that's going to be one of our biggest questions right now is, is that where are we at in terms of water sampling um, and how can we, what can we anticipate when we start to have this influx of a number of pool facilities operating or wanting to get ready for a particular date? Um, I don't suspect that we're going to get pools um, all sampling on the same day. However, some municipalities only accept on certain days, so um, or health centers. So that's going to be another challenge that logistically we want to make sure that we have ready to go before. So that's one of the that's one of the big questions that we've been um, putting forward and, and we've been hearing is is that what are kind of the expectations? And so AHS is working on a um, startup after um, pandemic uh, document. We're not we're not there yet, unfortunately, and we want to make sure that. Uh, our resources are put into kind of the right now. So, you know, um, uh, daycares, um, restaurants and hairdressers are kind of the first go around right now that are taking up a lot of our resources. But definitely we do have that document in the hopper. We're, we're uh, working on it, getting the information. And, and as organizations like the CDC provide more concrete recommendations, that kind of helps bolster the support for some of the recommendations uh, moving forward. So one of the recommendations that we hope to, um, uh, that we definitely are going to be moving forward with will be a requirement for a satisfactory water sample before a pool reopens. So uh, unlike with a shutdown, sometimes a pool may, may be able to open without a satisfactory water sample. Um, that's not going to be the case. We're going to have to see that satisfactory water sample just because there has been a number of situations where we just don't know what to expect. So um, that's kind of the main one. Um, we're going to potentially see again even within the stage three there might be some staged approaches um, as we've heard with some of the questions being asked about hot spots in different parts of the province we may see that uh, i'm not too sure again there's a lot of information that's still kind of up in the air and we haven't heard a lot of clarity as of yet so i think we're just kind of waiting on time frames and timelines and, and we're hopeful that what we can do is is that um, within the next couple weeks um, we'll be reaching out to the different stakeholder organizations such as AAAP, uh, AARFP, Life Saving Society, Red Cross, um, a, um, uh, AO, a, AOP, oh geez, I can't remember, uh, Alberta Parks, <laughs> so I do apologize if I, ARPA, thank you Dominic. Um, and, and those organizations, oh, and AHLA, so the Alberta Hotel and Lodging Association, um, and get the groups at the table, start talking. Um, we may not have all the information then, um, but we want to get it so that we can hear that information about next steps. So one of the biggest questions we've also had is, is that where potentially do spray parks sit in this? And, and at this time, and I'll use that statement quite often when people ask, well, what, do you, what do you mean? At this time, that's, that's the information I have as of today. Um, spray parks are part of that stage three relaunch. If we hear anything otherwise, that's going to come from the government of Alberta. And um, I have met with my colleagues in Alberta Health, so we put forward some questions regarding things like spray parks. But when we look at the um, when we look at the things like um, some of the restrictions currently in place in terms of um, the the health uh, health measures to protect the public. Um, 
when playgrounds aren't even encouraged to be open, um, we don't see spray parks being open at that time. So really what we need to do is we need to get through stage one. We need to see where things are at. We need to put those questions forward so that um, people know that there are concerns or questions from different groups and we have hopefully done that and we're just kind of waiting to hear that. So the same thing um, Dominic um, would uh, would be reflected for outdoor pools. So any pool, part of the pool regulation right now is still closed. Um, and that was originally part of the original order uh, 02 2020 that was issued by the Chief Medical Officer of Health. Um, so all pools are still closed until we've been advised otherwise. So um, we've asked questions about different types of pools. Um, so for example, there are uh, pools that are used for physiotherapy, um, specifically in physiotherapy clinics. Um, so there was a question brought forward because physiotherapists are allowed to open, um, what potentially could that or how could that look? So, you know, those are questions that we've, that we've put forward. Um, and then I think one of the biggest takeaways too from our perspective is, is that we understand and that's why we want to speak with our with these aquatic stakeholder groups is that we know that there's going to be operational challenges beyond what we can from a regulatory perspective. Uh, public expectations. Um, what do and one of the questions that we've heard from um, a number of these groups that I've sat in and, and had the opportunity to hear some of the questions is that what does social distancing still look like in an aquatic center? Um, is that even practical? Um, could we manage that? What kind of numbers would would be for gatherings? Could we manage that? Is that even is there a monetary uh, or is there a way that that would work for our facility? Are municipalities willing to fund aquatic centers from opening up if we have a, a very strict number still that, that may not be practical for our municipality? So those are kind of some of the things there. Um, other, otherwise, um, will people be back right away? How long will it be before people come back? Um, and then preparing for startup. It's not going to be a quick, quick startup. We're going to potentially see some delays. Now, I know some of you have maybe reached out to your local uh, pool service provider or chemical supplier, which is great. And I think that that's kind of something that you should probably start to do is develop that kind of plan. Um, but essentially, we're not going to have all the questions. But some of the important things that you know that you're going to need to start up, chemicals, um, getting staff ready, training, those kind of things, those are all things that we're going to need to have in place. Um, and facilities are going to need to start thinking about how we're going to do that. And then the other challenge will be is, is that what do the municipalities want and what are they willing to fund? Because definitely COVID was a huge economic challenge for, for everybody, not just the province of Alberta, but everybody worldwide, globally. And so we need to kind of just understand um, even at a local level, what's that going to look like? So, you know, those are all big questions and those are big challenges. And, and so, um, so then we're just going to have to kind of wait and see what, what the next, what the next steps are. Um, so, yeah, so, um, so let's kind of, I see that there's a couple of questions. Um, and, uh, so yeah, so, um, I, I'll just kind of scroll a little bit. Um, yeah, so parks are a municipal call. Um, so not, not well, so parks themselves, yes. Um, so the park itself, but the spray park is uh, permitted under the pool regulation, as Katie had indicated. So, um, so but um, there are some jurisdictional things when it comes to national parks. But when I talk to a park, I'm talking about a playground. Um, so there are some, uh, there's nothing regulatory right now with playgrounds, but the spray park itself is part of the pool regulations and therefore would still be fall under that stage three relaunch um, at this time. So just to kind of help answer that question, because I think that's kind of come up a couple of times is that where, where would that sit? So um, I'll leave it at that. I think that there's probably going to be a few questions, um, a few, few kind of uncertainty. And, and I think the big thing is, is that like some of those entities like a spray park, we may hear things differently as kind of stage two rolls in. I, I don't want to put any, any kind of, um, excitement into anybody, but we just don't know. Um, and we're hopeful that we can hear some clarification. Like I said, we put those questions forward. And uh, I think once we start to see more or people settle in after stage one, because I think that's the biggest thing that we've heard back is that stage one has to go forward. We have high priority issues that need to go forward. Once we get through those, we'll kind of get to your queue, which I know can be frustrating, but we're doing our best to try and kind of keep up to speed with that. So with that being said, I can talk all day, but I'll uh, throw it back to Dominique. So thanks again, Dominique.
Thank you, Kevin. Um, there's a few things that I just wanted to comment on, ask questions from you, Kevin, so don't go away yet. Um, Will, so with the uh, water sampling you mentioned, um, with the involvement of trying to open up and maybe having delays or a schedule for when we can submit um, the water samples um, to the lab, what about facilities that have undergone extensive or some uh, renovations during their shutdown? So many facilities took the opportunity to not only drain, but to do shutdown and to do maintenance. And typically we would have to communicate with our health inspector, let them know the projects that we did. And in many cases, the health inspector is required to do a site visit. Now, if 60% of our facilities had some sort of um, maintenance associated to it, and 60% of those need a uh, health inspector site visit, and we're still in COVID. Um, do we have considerations or anything that we're looking at? Like, is this something that as pool operators, we need to be prepared for an extensive delay because we did some maintenance? Something you can respond to for us, Kevin? Is he still there? document so that I can help kind of with that. So on our website, um, so I've included in the in the chat box, awesome. um, the AHS um, notification for renovations and alterations. And so um, about a year and a bit ago, we this question kept on coming up and up and up and saying, what is the difference between a renovation versus an alteration? And, and where does the necessity to notify Alberta Health Services come in to um, that and so what we did is is that we did up this document as a as a way of kind of helping to give some examples of where notification would be necessary. Um, so oftentimes a notification, if necessary, could be as simple as an email and a correspondence back and forth with the public health inspector. If it isn't of significant nature, it may not necessitate you know further further need to work in. But like you know things like changing out chemicals. Um, moving from, let's say, um, sodium hypo to calcium hypo. That's that's a significant um, upgrade, and, and we'd want to get some information about making sure that there's that, it, that we have um, sizing corrected, um, want to know that we have, so when we go to this facility, we're not surprised to see um, a, a calcium feeder system instead of a sodium feeder system. Um, things like, um, well, the anti-entrapment one is, is a huge one, but, um, um, work there, but when it comes to to kind of the most of the maintenance work that a facility is going to do, sending pumps for rebuilds, um, uh, replacing like for like media or filtered like for like in terms of sizing, um, as long as it it doesn't have impact on that water quality in terms of that, um, it's not a bigger filter, it's not a smaller filter, it's the same size filter. While I would in most cases like to have that notification it, it may not be necessary depending on what what it is so um when it comes to your question though about site inspection that's a good question right now for those high risk facilities we are definitely seeing that there is going to be a high need for our ability to get into those facilities um, especially the food facilities and and ch child care for sure vulnerable populations huge so there may be a delay and that's kind of where we were, that's why we're looking at that water sample results as being kind of the helpful piece to help saying, okay, if we're not there to kind of check everything, we know that that water sample sometimes is one of the kind of the key ways of us giving or giving us confidence that the facility is at least operating um, correctly, um, especially after such a huge shutdown. So that's definitely a question that we have. And we're not too sure where that's going to go. Um, so I, we could see um, a backlog of certain types of facilities that may need inspections. But again, that could be a management decision at that point in time. And so we'll just have to wait to see what the discussion is and, and what the priorities are at that point in time and where we're at. The hope is, is that by the time we get to stage three, we're going to see a lot of the businesses that we already regulate having um, having already started up and they'll have a good, they'll have a good uh, kind of at least a at least some time to get used mm -hmm. to what the normal is. And so it should be 
fairly straightforward. But again, I, I can't really say if we're going to be having to go into a facility. What I can say is, is if you think that you're going to be doing some work that may need your, your health inspector to either come in or some comments, better to reach out now um, than wait until we're kind of on the eve of stage three and you're like, oh, I forgot to send that email. Um, then at least that conversation is happening. And, and I, I will anticipate that um, there will be delays. Um, I've received emails about, you know, new spray parks, new pools, and I've been trying to feed through it but I'm even myself we've talked about people being seconded um, I've even been seconded to our CDC program so I'm doing intake for outbreaks um, part-time as well um, along with my regular uh, regular daily um, intake as well so it's so we're all kind of wearing multiple hats but I think the biggest mm -hmm. thing is to start the conversation first and kind of help to alleviate any question marks or any delays when we start to get to that point Great. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. I know that um, for me, I think the, the biggest piece is to remember we got to sit tight and hold and watch. So uh, one of the things about being in stage three is a huge bummer because we got to wait. But the other thing about being in stage three is that we get to see everybody else mess it up. <laughs> before it's our turn to launch. So we're gonna be able to observe and really sit back and analyze and see all the lessons that evolve and come out of this whole phased launch process. So um, phase stage one, we're gonna learn lots. Um, and then stage two, and then like you said, stage three might have more stages within it. Um, so one of the things that we can do um, that's to help is um, we can gather your guys' questions and concerns. And so I mentioned before, Kevin, that we've launched the new online forum. And that's basically what we're going to be encouraging everyone to do is the questions that you're putting in the chat here, we're going to collect and we're going to, um, whether we have an answer today or not, we're going to collect those. And then our group, uh, working group is going to collect all the questions from the forum, the discussion pieces, the considerations, and then we can take those to the table when we're talking with um, Alberta Health Services and the group of stakeholders like ARPA and ARFP and Life Saving and Red Cross and the Hotel Association. So we'll be there um, and we can collect all your questions and make sure that hopefully we'll be able to come through with some answers and knowing that we have time on our side. We have some time. We're not a May 14th launch, um, which, you know, I don't know what side you sit on, but the reality is where we're at. Now, as far as um, programming and spacing and how we're going to deal with those. There's lots of resources that we're going to learn and things that we're going to learn from other facilities, other provinces and other countries. So um, USA Swimming put out a document that even has nice images of spacing and how they're going to do workouts for 50 meters and all that kind of jazz. So we'll be able to see um, what's happening and how it works. Um, Ripples, the Life Saving Society, put out their newsletter, so make sure you get signed up for that. And then um, the link uh, Katie's going to put in there, there's also the Red Cross's uh, spring meeting update. It's a hefty document, uh, 15 pages of information and resources. So all those links are going to be available to you. They are currently posted on the Facebook page, and we're going to move them over to the forum shortly. Um, so it's important that you, we as a industry stay connected and know what's going on and then just basically sit back and watch. So thank you, Kevin, for your time. Um, we're gonna transition over to facility updates. Um, make sure that you put your questions uh, in the chat or in, um, like I said, the forum and we'll be able to uh, follow up with that and try and have some answers so that we are prepared come um, phase three, stage three. So thank you again, Kevin. Everyone make sure to say thanks, Kevin. I think you're gonna stay on the line. Um, and now let me introduce Nick from uh, Calgary YMCA. He's gonna give us a bit of a facility update. And then Brandy. Hi guys, uh, just a quick uh, five minutes uh, from me just to give you a picture of uh, how we are beginning to plan to reopen our buildings. Uh, first thing I would say is a big thank you to AAAB, thank you to Dom, 
thank you to the other board members, particularly those who are coming off the board after a few years for all that they have done. There's 135 people on this call. That's pretty amazing to get 130 aquatics professionals um, at this time uh, together, sharing hopefully some useful information. And, and it's a great net for those who are new. It's a great networking organization to be part of. So uh, thank you to you guys. <coughs> um, very quickly, I'm going to give you a little bit of um, uh, some information as to how uh, we are planning to work through the next kind of few weeks and few months, some assumptions we're making and some learnings that, that I've taken so far to share with you. Firstly, um, how are we planning to do it? Really, we've divided uh, our team up into sort of four uh, smaller groups. Um, and I clearly, as a, as a bigger organization, that's easier the, for us whether we have more resources to, to put to this than some others. But it gives you an idea of kind of the, the four buckets to think about. Firstly, remobilization. How do we physically open our facilities, let people back in, get our swimming pools up and running and everything else that we do? Um, that's the, obviously a core function of, of what we do. But there's some other stuff that this is a great time to be thinking about uh, as well. So number one, remobilization. Number two is optimization. How, uh, how efficiently are we running the things that we are currently doing and how can we run them more efficiently going forward? Um, clearly, we know the landscape is going to be very different. Uh, other ways in which we can do things that will make us even more efficient than we have, have been. And now uh, is a good time to be thinking about that kind of stuff before we switch everything back on again. Thirdly, uh, reimagine. Um, and by when I say reimagine, what we're talking about is, is maybe doing things completely different in different ways. Um, and uh, coming to the table with you know some some innovative thoughts as to how we can deliver programming in particular and other things in new ways. And lastly, fourthly, is our kind of community response. What can we do now, even though our buildings are closed, um, through a virtual online presence, um, through educational work that we do, through uh, kind of programs outside our facilities, particularly as we know now that our, our large buildings are not going to be open until um, phase three, whenever that might be. Um, but there may well be some opportunities to be doing some stuff uh, supporting the community that, that needs it in the short term. So very quickly, some assumptions that we are making along the way. Um, uh, firstly, I completely understand why, why uh, Kevin and AHS are not telling us when dates. I, you know, I wouldn't expect them to. Um, but for many people like me, we need something to work towards. And so I, we all are making the assumption that these three waves are a minimum of two weeks apart. That does not mean to say it's going to be two weeks. It's a minimum of two weeks. So really, we're looking to making sure that we are in a position to reopen on June 15th uh, if, uh, if everything aligns. Clearly, there are many reasons why that might ha happen, but that's a good place to start. And I'll add, Nick, to your comment of two weeks. If there's an outbreak or if the numbers go up, they're going to pull back. There's high chance that they could, we could, they could open and then we could actually get rolled back to phase one or phase zero if it's not in control. So there's some serious time concerns that we have no, nobody knows what's going to happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But certainly it's, uh, it's, it's good to have a kind of base level to start from and nothing is going to happen any sooner than June. And clearly, I may be wrong. I've been wrong many times before, but it's incredibly unlikely it's going to happen before June 15th. So that would be assumption one. And not, assumption two would be the level of activity when we do reopen. We've been following quite closely the YMCA's in the US, some of whom have reopened already. And we're looking at about 35% of footfall through the building, memberships drop in, however you sort of, um, whatever metric you use. But 35% is a good place to start as to how busy you will be when we reopen uh, the facilities. Third assumption we're making is we're not going to be delivering programs. So on the aquatics point of view, that means we're not going to be teaching swimming lessons the day that we open the doors. Uh, it'll be very much more about, on the aquatics point of view, drop-in swimming, lane swim, that kind of stuff. So our registered programs are slipping back into to later in the year. Um, and the fourth thing, obviously, is linked to that uh, activity level, which is, is is planning our staffing model. And really, that's about creating a foundation. Um, and uh, our staffing models, like everywhere else, are going to have to re reflect the new reality. Um, and so most of the work we're doing is focused on that and then turning that into a budget. Those are the assumptions. And then quickly, the learnings that I've taken so far, similar to what Dom has said already. You know, there's a great quote by Donald Rumsfeld about known knowns and lots of unknown knowns. Um, you can only plan 
what you know. You cannot plan for the what ifs and the buts and the maybes. Um, so uh, my experience in doing, you know, having opened some big buildings in the past and, you know, lots of those things changed and dates changed and this changed. Work on what you do know and focus on that, not what you don't know. And don't don't stress or, or spend too much time figuring out the unknowns. That'll come. Um, but uh, just focus on the details that, that you do know. Secondly, support your staff. Clearly, we're only going to get out of this if we have a, all of us have a solid staff team. And many of them are going through, uh, you know, very uh, difficult times, um, whether it be COVID related or whether that be economics and financially related. Um, but uh, we will need them as much as they need us to come out of this successfully. So make sure you're, you know, even if those who unfortunately are laid off, making sure you're touching base with them, reconnecting with them, keeping them engaged, keeping them part of the organization is going to be crucial and good for their mental health as well to be thinking about something rather than being stuck at home. Thirdly would be engage users. Um, we're a membership organization. Um, to give you an example of that, we decided to do a survey on Saturday, fr sorry, Friday of our membership in Calgary. We sent out the survey on Friday. By today, we have 6,000 replies already to this survey. We were expecting a couple of hundred, 500. Um, so people who are sitting at home with the time on their hands are really wanting to think about the good times ahead and engage with them. This would be a great time for you to engage with them to ask. Them, you know, we ask questions about what kind of controls do you do you feel comfortable with? What would you feel comfortable doing? What wouldn't you feel comfortable doing? Now's a good time to be reaching out to them. And then the last thing point I would make is. Um, I, uh, there are some of my colleagues on this call who t will tell you that I use the word nimble a lot. The way to get through this is to be nimble. Things are going to change. There's so much you don't know. It's about being nimble and being responsive. Just as Kevin has said, all those guidelines will change three times before we uh, are able to open our doors, I'm sure. So being a nimble and responsive is going to set us up for success. That's me done, Dom. Coming, coming, coming. Coming, thank you, Nick. That was great. Sorry, I didn't introduce you properly. I just said Nick, um, but Nick so with uh, South Calgary YMCA. So thank mm -hmm. you for your um, update and guidance, some advice. Um, very, very helpful. Um, what I think we're going to do now is we are getting close to our end of time. So um, I have a few other, a bunch of other facilities that want to do updates. But what we might do is I'm going to provide the door prize information for everyone. So we'll switch over the agenda a little bit, pause, and I'll give you the door prize information. That way, if anybody uh, needs to go, they can. And those of you that wanna stay and see the updates, obviously that's the kind of best part, um, aside from Kevin and Nick um, and the AAP update. Um, but that's, uh, a really key part of our work is that connection piece. So um, I'm going to transition over to the door prize information. So get your pens or um, copy paste screenshot uh, fingers ready. Okay, so our first door prize is a whopping $450 value, courtesy of Lakeview Aquatics. This is for a free registration in the pool and hot tub Alliance Certified Pool Operator course that's running in May. It's uh, online and it is approved by Alberta Health Services to meet your pool operating training requirements. This is super, super generous. So not only the platform that we're using with the click meeting, but a pool operators course. So that is a huge value for anyone um, in our industry. So how to enter. So you have to go to the Lakeview Aquatics Consultant Facebook page. The link is there. You need to go on to the post and respond with why you want to take that CPO course and tag two friends. So you have between now and 5 p.m. to enter. Um, and it is a phenomenal prize. So I'll leave it on the screen and... Katie is going to, I'm sure, post the Facebook link in the chat as well or in the notes. Um, but I'm going to transition off of this page. Everyone, make sure to say thank you to Katie. Thank you, Katie. And um, there's your link. So you have to like the Facebook page. Step one, like the Facebook page. Step two, comment on that post 
there's a little image there. Comment on that post on the Facebook page with why you want to take the course and you got to tag two friends and then you get an entry. The next prize is from Automated Aquatics. Thank you, Automated Aquatics. I just lost my screen, but um, the prizing is a this or that. So it's basically a headset, um, an aquatic headset. Here we go. There we go. So it's your choice of a set of finite earbuds. There's two different styles. Um, so basically the winner can choose which of the two um, finished earbuds, aquatic earbuds they want. So to enter the Automated Aquatics Door Prize, you need to go to the Automated Aquatics Facebook page. The link is there. And I think Katie's gonna put in the chat for us. And then um, there's going to be, there was a post that has the prevent the spread of COVID with a bunch of their sanitizing products. You need to comment on that post with which of the products you'd likely want in your facilities. Um, to, again, between now and five o'clock Mountain Standard Time in order to enter for this. So like the Automated Aquatics Facebook page and then comment which of the six products you would like in your facilities. And just also, this is an Alberta Association of Aquatic Professionals. So really we're trying to keep the prizes to Alberta residents. Thank you. Aquam and All Tides, um, they have generously donated three separate $100 All Tide gift cards. So that gives you the opportunity to go in and review their catalog and then select an item of your choice. They will ship it directly to you. So to enter, there's a link here. Basically, you need to go to this link. Katie's already put it in the chat box. She's super fast. And it's a subscription to their newsletter. Um, they got lots of great information that they want to share with us. So that newsletter is a great place to be on the up and up of the products and the uh, initiatives of Aquam and All Tides. So subscribe to the newsletter and you will be entered into the draw to win one of three uh, $100 value gift certificates. Thank you, Aquam and All Tides. More door prizes. You get something, you get something, you get something. It's my Oprah. Anyhow, so Splashables Inc., um, they have donated an everything swim sweatshirt and a pair of goggles. So this is exciting. Um, go to their Instagram account, at Splashables Inc., on Instagram. So this is an Instagram one. And you just got to like today's post. So um, Nora's posted something on there for us. So like today's post, and then you'll be entered to win an everything swim sweatshirt and goggles. Thank you, Splashables. And our last door prize comes from the Canadian Red Cross. So this is a roadside first aid and safety kit uh, valued at $44. So today's entry is you attended the meeting. So after the meeting, we'll be going through and uh, selecting a winner, and then we will contact you. So all of the winners for the door prizes will be contacted after 5 p.m., uh, Mountain Standard Time today. And so uh, we hope to make those announcements. And, you know, this is our first go at a virtual door prize. So um, hopefully you guys can engage with our vendors. So we want to make sure that um, you know how important that these vendors are to the AAP. So our work is volunteer. Uh, we try and run as much as we can without you know, obviously loads of expenses. And so normally we would have a in-person meeting, there would be lunch and there would be coffee and there would be nice door prizes. So also you would be able to meet the vendors. You would be able to stand in front of their booths and discuss with them and pick up their products and touch them and they might give you something. And so in today's virtual world, we didn't, we weren't able to do a trade show, but we were so grateful when each of these vendors were able to step up and still contribute and give back to the community and give back to Alberta aquatic professionals. Um, so it's really important that we wanna make sure to say thank you to them. Um, I also wanted to, I missed on the Red Cross slide, but I just wanted to call attention. There's a newsletter update from the Red Cross. Normally the vendors or the stakeholders would give a presentation at our meetings. Um, that's not happening today. We only had time for Kevin. So um, 
the Red Cross gave us a giant document here. So it'll be tagged in the notes in the chat and we'll pop it over on the forum and pop it on the AAP website so that it's all the places for you to get the information. Um, so yeah, make sure that you engage with our vendors on social media, uh, have those discussions, do the likes, do the Instagrams, do the shares, and um, hopefully you will be the lucky winner of one of these amazing prizes. And that being said, um, we, I'm going to make the meeting, that's kind of our finish of the formal piece, but we are going to continue on with some of the um, facility operators who agreed to do a quick little update. So if you want to stay on, you're more than welcome to. If you need to go in respect of your time, we understand and you'll be able to look at the updates later on once Katie posts them. So again, thanks to all our vendors, thanks to our participants, um, thanks for coming. Those of you who are staying with us, thanks for staying. And we're gonna go to an update from Hi. Carly. Hi Carly, how are you? I'm good, how are you? So Carly's with the town of Strathmore. So Carly, can you give us an update on what's happening in Strathmore at the Aquatic Center? Yeah, you bet. Um, so we've been closed to the public since March 14th and we have drained, we have a, um, a hot tub, a kiddie pool and a lap pool. So all three basins have been drained. Um, our casual lifeguard instructors and CSRs all have been temporarily laid off. Uh, but we have been keeping up with them through Zoom and then the town of Strathmore sends out a daily update email to all of their staff. So our casuals have still been receiving that too. So it's been, it's been really good to, to keep in contact with all of them. Um, actually the town was great too. They offered up some opportunities to our laid off staff with the parks and operations department too through the summer. So that was a good opportunity for them. Um, our full-time staff were just kind of working from home. We had an audit done by the Life Saving Society in January, so it's actually been a good time to review all of that and make some of those changes. And then um, doing just like our regular shutdown stuff right now too. So, so far we've had uh, tile repairs done, our slide maintenance, uh, just other general stuff that we would normally do during shutdown. And then we've been able to bump up one of our capital projects, which was getting our boilers replaced. So that's kind of nice that, we were able to get that kind of put for this time frame too. So then hopefully when it's time for us to reopen, we can actually stay open for a while, not have to shut for any of that maintenance. Um, we've canceled a lot of our programming. So we're just kind of in a brainstorming spot now trying to come up with some different scenarios to see what it will look like when we do get the opportunity to reopen all of that. And then what it'll look like to bring our staff back to and run the research. We're really thankful that everything's been extended so that no one's going to come back fully expired. <laughs> That's been really nice and a bit of um, a break on everyone, I'm sure. Um, and then we've been reaching out to our regulars to uh, just checking in with them. We had a CSR who's made a lot of phone calls out to them just to let them know that we're thinking of them and we can't wait to get them back into our pool. But yeah, that's that's the happenings in Strathmore. Awesome. Thank you, Carly. Thanks, Carly. We're going to go back to Brandy. And I guess I need to give a little bit more time for the technical behind the scenes magic to happen before we can get Brandy on the line. Um, so yeah, so make sure to put in your comments if you're not, um, if you want to let us know what's happening in your facility, that chat box is there. Um, take some, you know, a couple seconds and just type out what you're doing, what your facility's up to, what projects you're on, what kind of maintenance things you guys did during shutdown. All of those things are really great for us to see what's happening across the province. Um, also, your questions. If you have questions or consideration that your departments, your municipalities are looking at for uh, phase three, uh, pop those in there. They will be captured and we will be able to take them forward and hopefully get an answer. So we hope to have this meeting actually have some outcomes, not just the networking and the sharing, but some starting and moving the work forward. I see that she's linked on. She's got to open up her camera. I think we can hear you speak now if you start talking, Ashley. There we go. Oh. Yay. Magic. It's magic. 
All right. So uh, I'm Hi. Ashley. I'm from well, the city of Red Deer. And I'm a board member of the AAAP. And in the at city of the Red Deer, we have four aquatic centers, including an outdoor pool. And at this time, um, all four facilities have been drained and we are in shutdown mode. So completing a lot of big projects um, and just getting working through some of those things. We will only be having these as our shutdowns. So we've been um, told that there won't be any more shutdowns. So this is our time. Once we're up and operating, we wanna be full serves the community as best as we can. So our um, facility operators are working through those shutdowns currently. Um, we've had some bigger projects where one of our parking lots is being redone at the GH Daw Center. And that work hopefully will begin in June and in June which is typically our busy time. So this is kind of a good time to do it because we won't have cars there, obviously. We don't have to work out the logistics of that. So we're excited to have that project done. Um, also the GH Dahl Center is having a large window project completed where we're putting solar guard on all of our exterior windows. And again, a good time because we don't have to worry about the safety of our patrons and the lifts. And so we're gonna be doing that project as well. Um, let's see what else here. All of our casual and part-time employees were laid off. Uh, we do have 17 employees who were redeployed to parks from our permanent full-time. And then there's a handful of us still working from home and doing different projects. We, the City of Red Deer has launched a project task force team that is in charge of the sanitation plan um, and the relaunch strategy in terms of what kind of chemicals we're going to be using, what chemical ordering looks like for relaunch and reopening and how we're going to effectively have our facilities have people in them and keep them sanitized. So again, we will share all that work as um, we move forward with it. This new platform, especially with the forum, I think is going to be great, especially during this time. Um, our community group our aquatic group's been talking about different initiatives. How can we still uh, maintain the National Drowning Prevention Week? What are some of the cool ideas that we could do? What are other communities doing? Maybe it's something that municipalities from all across Alberta do different things, similar things. So really excited to hear about what other people are going to be doing. And I think this is going to be a really good um, platform for that. Um, Oh, and the other big project that we're working on right now is um, we're going through a signage consultation with the Life Saving Society. So we've been doing lots of work with um, updating signage at all four aquatic facilities, as well as one of our city owned um, outdoor amenities, the Discovery Canyon. So we've been working with them a lot virtually, which has been wonderful. Um, our, the slide guide came in and finished all of our water slides, got that all finished right away as we were sure he was going to be getting booked up quite quickly. And I think that's all that I have. This was a great meeting. So um, yeah, looking forward to more updates and using the new online forum. I think it's going to be a really good tool for us all to connect and share ideas and see what other communities are doing that's working really well. So thanks for this today. Thanks, Ashley. Appreciate it very much. Um, that's great. Thanks for the update from the city of Red Deer. Um, who are we gonna go to next? Sorry, Dom, it's Katie. So we're mm -hmm. what we're gonna do is Marion's gonna try calling back with the presenter pin because she's on an attendee pin. So we're gonna say goodbye to Ashley and we're gonna put Josh Coke on the spot. If he's oh is he still here? I'm just scrolling. Sorry. While you do that, I'll let you. I was just going to uh, say something that w is going to complement Ashley's statement. So about the forum and water safety initiatives and things. So way back when, um, AAP was involved in, we spearheaded a uh, shower campaign. So we um, had a number of different facilities across the province. I think it was close to... Oh, I don't even want to say the number, but we had a number of different facilities across the province do uh, water, like a shower before you get in the pool campaign. Um, and it was in July, I believe. And so the idea was that we all unified and did big blitzes, making sure everyone was showering before they got in the pool. Lots of information about educating the public on the reasons why it's important to shower completely and those kind of things. And so that initiative, um, was something that we did and we'd like to see those kind of pieces happen again. Um, but it's hard to collect everyone to get 
everyone moving in the same direction. So certainly the forum is definitely a place where we could see that kind of work happening. So a collective campaign for National Life Jacket Week, a collective campaign for water safety, drowning prevention. So for sure, I can see those things happening. So I'm excited to have you on. Excited to have Josh on now as well. He's part of the new Nobody board. Nobody feels that way. Yeah, we yeah, do. And I, I, uh, I apologize. I didn't send you a photo. Um, and I saw that okay. Michael Michael Warkall now has employed me. So glad to be part of Leduc. Oh, is there a um, little bit of an edit? Do we need to make an edit on <laughs> I'm I'm hoping to parlay this into some sort of competitive bidding process where they both fight to not have me. Um, uh, so no, <laughs> no, it's my fault. I didn't send it. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's been a little uh, while uh, since I've seen a lot of folks on here, but um, hope everyone's doing okay and staying safe and staying sane. Um, we're not in a very different boat than most of you, so I won't take up too much time. Um, maybe say what what's community you're yeah, in? Yeah, I'm with Strathcona County. And um, we have three aquatic facilities right now and a couple of different water parks. Uh, or sorry, water parks, uh, splash parks. I'm gonna get sassed by the county people for saying that. Um, so we're in the same boat. We're waiting around to kind of see what's gonna happen. And uh, I annoy my team probably consistently because I have discovered a very optimistic streak through this experience. And I just keep saying it takes one one team, one breakthrough, one, uh, one good day to uh, change the course of this thing. So I'm hopeful that's coming. Uh, though right now it looks like I uh, don't know what we'll be doing for a little while because um, we're in the same boat. We have, from a staffing perspective, lost all of our hourly people. Um, recreation department was hit the hardest. We're our biggest department in terms of staff, uh, and the vast majority moved off, um, off payroll. Now, it was interesting because we really fought to keep them on for as long as possible, and with the benefits from CERB and um, some of the other things out there, the the conversations to letting people go went, went a lot better than we had ever anticipated for most of us. Um, so we've been staying connected through Zoom and Microsoft Teams and some other things to various teams out there. Um, what's really been, I, I like I said, I'm gonna stick with my optimist streak, uh, some of the positives that have come out of this really brutal situation um, have included a lot of, horizontal teamwork. So a lot of silo busting departments and just facility to facility are working together better than they have in the past. Um, we're communicating a lot because someone will realize a problem and then share it. And you know, it, we realize it applies to everybody. Um, another big positive out of this is uh, like some of the rest of you, we've been moving ahead with some different projects. Um, all three facilities had some specific work planned this year and they've all bumped them up. So as long as they can continue to work, uh, we've had different trades in there. The biggest project uh, that was wrapping up was uh, Kinsman Leisure Center was finishing off a year of semi shutdown refurbishment. Um, so some stuff was open, some was closed as we did some big facility changes. Um, Silver lining in this for, for that is we were still running a lot of things and the process has been so challenging in some regards that there's no way we would have been able to continue running anyway. They lost um, air handling for several weeks, uh, would not have been able to <laughs> run through that. So um, they're getting a lot of work done that would have caused a lot of hassle anyway. And then uh, our big multiplex Millennium Place is slated to go into a long three month shutdown uh, it's a very widely used facility. And so they're getting as much as they can done early as well to hopefully push off some planned shutdowns and work. Um, fortunately, right now, our, our permanent staff are still in place as well as people acting in various roles. Some of them are on this call. Um, we're hoping that that stays the case for uh, the long term. Uh, we have, uh, as a community, really focused in on our emergency operations center and emergency um, Oh, the name's ESS, I'm, I'm blanking here. Uh, social services, emergency social services. And so we've been able to deploy a lot of full-time staff that direction. Um, there's a lot of work to be done. And so again, they're seeing a lot of new areas, making a lot of new connections, uh, which has been helpful. 
Um, and then, like the rest of you, we're just waiting to see what the heck is going to happen. Um, making contingency plans for everything. Um, one of the big ones right now is just determining if we bring everyone back and what that process looks like, but there's a real chance that we might not be running programs for several months up to a year, depending on what happens, right? And if that was the case, we could see a real brain drain in terms of loss of staff onto other things, and then the disruption from all of our training feed feeders. So trying to really understand what does that look like if we get to a point of reopening and we're all looking to hire and there's not a lot of people in the system. So um, I think it was, was it um, Nick early on or I can't remember who, who started us off, but same thing is like, how do we reimagine what does aquatics look like moving forward from this um, with social di distancing, but also with training and developing staff. I think if we come out of this without a really strong training plan, uh, we've wasted some of the time. So um, across the, the county, that's kind of, I think the highlights that I got from the different facility supervisors. That's it. Now it looks like Dominique's frozen. So either I'm out of the call or she's out of the call. <laughs> keep things interesting if nothing else dom are you still there oh dom okay. i wrecked it i wrecked it for you katie no, <laughs> no we, we work on the fly so dom if you want to log out and log back in i will keep the show moving thanks so much josh uh, we'll log you, sorry, not disconnect you, but I'm going to make you no longer a presenter. We're going to try and go to Marion. If you are on the phone, if you want to try talking, Marion. We're just going to give Marion a second. We've had some issues with call-ins today, so I apologize those of you who've tried to call in to present. Marion? Afraid, Marion, we're not hearing you. Vicky, I have made you a presenter if you want to go ahead and authorize your mic and camera. On deck, we'll go to Sunny after that. Welcome. Give us your update, Vicky. Hi. Hello from the University of Calgary. You actually get two tutorials for the place. <laughs> So we're currently working on our done right now. Um, the pool is closed, believe it or not. Uh, we still have water in the pool to be draining on Wednesday. So we've been working on some big projects so far, um, meaning things like some new liquor chairs. Right now we've got a whole bunch of um, people out there from Flesher, Marble, and Tile doing some pool tiling. So that's very exciting. Uh, with regards to staffing, we're down to the, bo the bottom of the barrel, the rest of the barrel, maybe. It's Victoria and myself, as, long, as well as Renee, who's on the call from home in Port Saskatchewan. She'll be joining us down here soon. We'll be doing our maintenance, our big acid wash, the pool base. And then um, getting our shutdown out of the way from August. Um, past that, we've been working on big projects. Uh, we had Fluid Consulting, I think John's on the call. They were in earlier this year to do a facility audit for us. So we've been fixing things that he noticed, which has been great to try to make the facility and make some changes. We've also, oh, hi Renee. She said, hi Renee. <laughs> we've also been working on things like updating our policy manuals or staff training manuals just to get ready so that when we do open, we'll be brand new, spick and span. Um, I think like everyone else, we're not sure what to expect with regards to programming and, you know, how can we even run things like Lang Swim? How can we run staff training? So I'm glad to hear there's lots of people with new ideas and the same problem and hopefully we can work as a big aquatics family to come up with some great answers. So I'm curious, Vicky, what's it like working with the secondary <laughs> I think you asked what it's like working at a, a university. Right now with COVID, yes. Yeah, yeah it's definitely been interesting. 
Um, when we closed down, I was actually in the middle of teaching a university swim lab, which I had to move to online. Never thought I'd be teaching swimming lessons through the internet. That was interesting. <laughs> um, the university is shut down, so buildings are locked. You need key access into the building, so it's definitely different around here. There's um, uh, lots of things starting to trickle down from up top. There was layoffs that are coming, temporary layoffs, like a lot of other facilities are happening right now. So it's going good, and I think they're already starting to, well, they are already starting to plan for fall term potentially being online. So that'll be interesting to see what happens there. Okay, awesome. I'm sorry. Some of you are reporting an echo. That's my issue. So thank you. And thank you, Vicki, for the update. We will go to Sunny next. And then I think Don first. So thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> There's a Wi-Fi just kicked out, so I'm hot spawning now. <laughs> okay, so I have oh. made Sunny a presenter. Sunny will just have to authorize her microphone and camera. There'll be little dots below the video. And then once we see her get started, um, Jenny is no longer here. After Sunny, we'll go to Michelle Berkeley, and then we'll... See, I see Marion's typing, so I apologize, Marion, that call-ins were not a great option today. It didn't seem to, the forces were not with us on some counts. So just looking. Sunny, if you can't see, oh, there we go. Perfect. Can we see Sunny or hear Sunny? Do we see you? There we go. We see you. And we hear you. You got to unmute. Nope. No. Nope. Oh, thanks for the big update, Janine. Sorry, Sunny. Uh, I think it's going to be the earbuds. It's If it's Mac earbuds, we always have an issue with Mac earbuds for some reason. Just weird because mine have been working okay today. Maybe that's why I got kicked out. Maybe they're not. Uh, no. Can Sunny, anybody are you here, Sunny? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can charades your update for us. Do this as an interpretive dance. <laughs> There's no swimming. Okay, I got that. There's no swimming. Um, she's in her office by herself. She's in the building. She's the whole person. Okay. She's just one person. Uh, she's typing a lot on her computer. <sighs> Nothing, eh? No. Oh, she's she's gonna type it in the chat and put her update in the chat. Um, okay, so this is the nature of how uh, virtual meetings go. We are winging it, and then we learn that things didn't work the way we thought they would work. Um, but you know, if if you hold on. If you hold on for one more day, little Wilson Phillips quote for, for you. Uh, if you hold on for one more day, uh, you'll get the updates um, from the different facilities in the chat. Um, we can move the discussion to the forum as well um, or over to Facebook. Facebook's always fun. Um, uh, who else is, is Michelle on deck? So if we can't hear Sunny, we probably need to let her type away. Still can't hear you. Is you going to sing? Should we do a Wilson Phillips? Coming on, but Sunny, or for anybody who's listening, if you start the app with headphones in and then you unplug them, I found for me, I have to reauthorize my mic. Dom, this is what we experienced when your videos wouldn't play during the pool aid mm -hmm. session. I had my earbuds in. It's just not smart enough on the fly if you change the audio. So that might be the issue, Sunny, if you want to give it one last try, is retry your microphone, reauthorizing it from your end. If not, we'll go to Michelle. Try your microphone. So there's a gear. Michelle, maybe we could sing. <laughs> do, 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 I just want to hear Sunny's voice. <laughs> I love seeing everybody's voice and hearing you guys. I love seeing I miss our, our meeting. And hearing us. <laughs> no, she can't figure it out. It's not happening. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye.
I'm going to do my airport air, air flight attendant practice. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> um, bye-bye. Hi, Michelle. Nice. Hi. How are you? you? I'm great. Sydney How are you? Duke in the house representing. Yeah. Do you want to give us a little update on how you're how you you're doing and what's happening with the city yeah. of Leduc? I would love to. Um, hi from Jess and myself in Aquatics. Um, Michael from Rec Services. Josh Coke, welcome to the team. Apparently, I wasn't aware of that until just now. So that is stellar. Um, yeah, so we have been closed since March 15th and have made the decision not to open our outdoor pool and spray park as same with kind of everybody. Um, we drained all our basins a really long time ago, it seems like. So doing lots of regular shutdown things um, with that. Uh, one exciting thing is we're having our water slide stairs redone. So they've actually got a giant tent on the pool deck and they've cut all the stairs apart and have taken them away and are redoing them and then we'll bring them back and reinstall them. So that's kind of fun. Um, all of our casual rec services staff have been temporarily laid off. So um, out of the 100 total, 54 of those were aquatic staff. Um, most of our full-time frontline staff have been redeployed to our parks department as of last week. So they'll be out keeping things nice outside. Um, currently we're offering some virtual programming, which is super fun. Katie, I have a whole new appreciation for this whole platform that you are running on a very regular basis. Um, we're doing live stream Facebook, classes four times a week, two fitness classes and two like kid rec program classes. We will be adding a seniors aquafit class um, starting next Wednesday. So we're really excited about that. Obviously no water will be involved, but uh, we'll kind of adapt aquafit. That'll be super fun. Um, corporately, the city has created a recovery framework rooted in the province's three-stage relaunch plan, obviously, um, but we've gone a bit further to identify how we will roll out specific services and restart various elements of operations. So that's kind of in the works starting today. Um, the city's currently developing recovery plan templates for each business unit to complete. Um, yeah, those are done and starting to be used. We will be offering outdoor summer camps from 9 a.m. to noon throughout the summer, which uh, makes most of us a little bit nervous. And there's some logistical things, obviously, to think about that. Um, that's not usually my wheelhouse, but I might be helping out a little bit with that. So we'll see how that goes. Keep your fingers crossed for us. Um, we are currently anticipating a late summer or early September estimate for when we'll be able to open our rec facilities. So at this point, that is the plan is uh, early September is what our, we have started budgeting for. Um, that will be for drop-in use, obviously, no programs as of yet. Um, that being said, once we do start offering registered programs, it'll likely be at about half capacity or less. Um, and that might kind of be held off until next year. So we'll see what happens over the summer. Um, we are assuming that spray parks will be in the same category as playgrounds. Um, Michael received some clarification on playgrounds already. I don't know if somebody else has already kind of mentioned this, but um, the response back that he got was at this time, no decision to open them has been made, but regarding playgrounds and playground equipment, the recommendation is to keep the area closed unless the owner can assure structures can be disinfected on a regular basis. And the clarification on regular basis is that um, it would be suggested for high touch surfaces every three hours being disinfected. Um, physical distancing obviously needs to be maintained and the maximum of 15 people attend the playground at one time. So as per those things, we're not bothering with the spray park at this time. Uh, yeah, that's it from the city of Leduc. Yeah, that spray park piece is real interesting because earlier in the conversation, I think it was Katie had 
brought up that spray parks fall under the pool standards. So mm -hmm. they can't be open, but the park yeah. structure is the park piece. So, and a lot of them are intermixed. So a lot of them will have mm -hmm. both of them in the same kind of region. Or, so yeah. it's definitely challenging to try and make a decision. Um, but sanitizing every three hours, like those, that's a high volume, especially when your limitations is only 15 people can be on it at one time. So that's going to be a discussion that we're going to have to have once it gets time to opening, right? Like if yeah. we can only, if you look at some of these charts that like USA Swimming has, you know, if you can only put 10 people in your 10 lane pool, mm -hmm. can we even be open? Like there's yeah. some significant, I mean, I applaud some of the, pro the province's facilities for just making blanket statements that they won't be open until like they're not opening the summer pool. So some of the communities have gone and made that statement. And what that does is it sets the stage for what other facilities are gonna be doing, but it also helps everyone in the community, including the employees, mm -hmm. the staff, the management have a pathway, right? So yeah. you guys in Leduc have a tentative launch and that gives you a goal to work towards of a plan mm -hmm. that you know likely nothing will happen before then but then at least you can work for something so i'm not saying i'm in support of closing or opening that's my opinion doesn't matter anyway um <laughs> it matters to me. no no but um <laughs> the fact that the leadership is making decisions and communicating those to staff and the community members helps people to be able to move forward with what's what it's going to look like right like mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so um thanks for your update thanks for your guys's contribution um appreciate you guys um coming on and giving us a little bit of an update again if um you guys weren't on or weren't able to get through you're welcome to put your updates on the chat and I think we'll go back to the slides. Um, thanks, Michelle. We'll go back to the slides. Um, our next meeting, people, it's time has come. Our next meeting is November 6th. So crossing our fingers that we're going to be able to be in person. Um, if not, we'll figure out a way. We'll figure out a way to make it work because I think your attendance here uh, resoundingly tells us that this work is needed, that this connection is important. Um, so communicate with us, let us know what questions you have, what information you want. Um, we can, you know, we're, we're not the ones that create the content. We're just sharing the content that's already been done. We're sharing the research articles. We're sharing the notifications, the updates. Um, we're just sharing the information so that you can go to one place and find it or talk to someone and then hopefully someone else has an answer for you so um we're not necessary we don't create the content we're just sharing it for you and that's really important and so hopefully our november 6th um, is in person hopefully everyone is healthy and your communities are vibrant and we're moving forward in positive healthy ways um so uh we want to make sure that, um, yeah, you know what I'm going to do before we go? I'm just going to scroll back to the vendors. Um, I'm going to scroll back up here to the vendors links. So the door prize, anyone that was on the call, um, here we have your login and we will uh, draw for this roadside first aid kit from the Red Cross. And the Red Cross provided an update, which will be posted. Katie's already done it. Thank you, Katie. Um, and then we'll put it on the forum and the Facebook page after as well. Um, or maybe I can't put it on the Facebook page, but we'll put it on the forum. That's the best place for it. Um, the Facebook only lets me post pictures. So I'd have to screenshot it and then it doesn't look very pretty. It's kind of fuzzy. It's hard for you to read it anyway. Um, okay, so Splashables, again, visit their Instagram and like today's post. And Aquam and All Tides, there's three prizes here to be won, and you've just got to be subscribed to their newsletter. So the, the link, the MailChimp link is there. Okay. And Automated Aquatics, your choice of the Finnis earbuds. So go to their, it's two steps here. So go to the Automated Aquatic Facebook page, 
like the page, and then comment on that post with what product you'd most like to have. And Lakeview Aquatics. This one is another two-stepper. So it's the first step is go to the Facebook page. That's the link is there. And then the second step is you got to like it. You got to go to the Facebook page. You got to like it. And then the second stage step is comment why you want to take the course and then tag two friends. Okay. Um, that one's a doozy, a doozy of a prize. So thanks everybody. Um, thanks to the board. Thanks to our new board. Thanks to our outgoing board. Thanks to all the stakeholders. So we had Swim Alberta here on the call. We had Alberta Health Services. We had representatives from lots of different stakeholder groups like the Red Cross. Um, and I saw from RFP. So um, thanks very much for um, coming. Uh, again, we'll move the conversation and shift it over to the um, forum and hopefully that work can continue. Again, we look for your help with uh, any of the com committees that you want to help us with. Um, and yeah, send us your questions. Send us your questions and we'll take them to the table when we're talking about stage three and that reopening process. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Stay safe. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Anna. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks so much, Automated. Mandy, appreciate your update. I don't have, I can't really read it all right now, but um, I'll read it in a bit. Thanks for that. Katie, oh my gosh, you guys, can we get some woo-hoos for Katie? Um, her ability to manage and just stay so cool as a cucumber under all this fiasco sound bits, me getting bumped off and everybody not getting in. So thanks to Katie. Um, send us your feedback, you know, we welcome we welcome hearing from you. Um, obviously, we know the technical pieces. There were some glitches. But as far as content, did you find it valuable? Um, our emails are on that aap.ca website. So you're welcome to get a hold of us. Thanks very much, you guys. Thanks, Janine. Oh, thanks for coming, Craig. Thanks for thanking Katie. Yeah, Katie crushes it. That's a good one. You crushed it. It's a good aquatic reference from Finding Nemo. Katie, do you want to pop back on and help us close this out? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Do I just like hit end or what's what's the best process? What's the classy? What's what's the classy way to close the show? Katie, you coming back in? I can see your face. I can't see uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, One it's second. my my tablet is is ready to go on strike, right? Because I've been streaming since early this morning. <laughs> so, it's overheated. <laughs> no, it's good. There's no real way you close this. I mean, people start to leave and then you say goodbye. And I normally just check the chat box for any last questions and then just you know, so uh, I'm Katie Crysdale. You're Dominique McDonald. This was the Association of Aquatic Professionals. Uh, you can go to you can go to aap.ca <laughs> to find out more information about the Alberta Association of Aquatic Professionals. Thanks for tuning into this meeting. Thanks for watching this recording. Check out the new forum if you find this beneficial. Join in for the next meeting in November. It's open to any. Uh, aquatic professional in the province of Alberta. There's no requirement to join. There's no fees. Just come on out and meet other aquatic professionals and network and collaborate. So thank you so much, everyone. Wonderful. Thanks, everyone. Bye.